first off, hi everybody, thanks for joining. My name is Kevin Kirkpatrick, I'm a solutions architect with Advisix. Um, my focus is more SDDC cloud, uh, NSX, uh, certainly one of those things that falls into one of those categories and spent a lot of time uh, with NSX over the last probably uh, four to five years at this point. So today, uh, well, first off, I uh, want to remind everybody, uh, we do have an actual webinar series. Uh, we have some other NSX webinars along with other technologies that we record and post uh, that are uh, probably of interest to you. Uh, so we encourage you to go check that out, like, subscribe. So what are we going to talk about today, right? So operationalizing NSX. And as far as an agenda, we kind of uh, are breaking this down into three main parts. So people, process, and architecture, and talking about what that means uh, and how to um, kind of get NSX up and running and be successful, uh, both the short term and the long term for you and your business. So this webinar is based on more than 100 enterprises that have successfully operationalized NSX. Uh, all the best practices and guidances that we're gonna go over are based on actual production customers. So, you know, we're, we try to avoid all the, what I like to term architecture. Um, and again, this stuff is based on real world material and data. And what we're gonna go through is that it's really not all that complicated as far as NSX and running and maintaining it. Um, and kind of the key is making minimal incremental changes on your way to what you define as being successful. So network virtualization represents a major advancement in helping organizations realize the benefit of you know, three things that we commonly see, speed, agility, and security as far as operational efficiencies are concerned. And customers can really leverage NSX to, to drive the maximum value through in all three of these different areas. As far as maturity model, uh, we kind of talk about the path division. Uh, so. Traditionally, teams were siloed, skill sets were special, specialized, um, you know, vertically. Uh, but more and more as the businesses evolve, as requirements change, uh, teams are becoming more blended and more cross-functional, right? So you have people that are being trained on not just a traditional silo technology, but they're crossing over and learning other technologies that are adjacent to them or maybe something you know completely different but that's applicable to whatever the job is and a lot of the manual processes uh that are uh part of or that were you know remained in those silos are being automated and legacy tools are being replaced with modern integrated solutions and some of the customers are implementing things like um, leaf spine network fabrics or uh, cloths is another term. Uh, and a lot of you have probably already virtualized a majority of your servers. So you can kind of look at this and um, kind of put a, a, a virtual slider, if you will, on uh, each of these columns to kind of figure out where you are in the maturity model as far as um, NSX operations is concerned. So simplifying the situation. Um, network virtualization offers the potential to unlock a lot of strengths within your organization and major benefits of transforming how work gets done across um, your entire technology organization. It also represents a change that needs to be kind of carefully considered to ensure that, um, you know, there's clarity and alignment across uh, the organization as a whole. So ensuring that you have an agile organizational structure, blended teams that have clear roles and responsibilities, that's really going to allow you to derive the greatest outcomes 
and subsequently value for your organization and everybody that's in it. And what we do as a company is we can help provide that information, guidance, organizational structures, uh, internal engagement, communication strategies, roles and responsibilities, things like that. From a process standpoint, um, we talk about network virtualization and all the opportunities to increase productivity through automation of manual processes. So across uh, the application lifecycle. So defining your ideal future state of how you want to provision, manage, monitor your applications and infrastructure, uh, as well as the different services that you that you're ha if you have or are hosting, um, that's gonna allow you to move away from unnecessary existing processes and practices. And you know, we can help you give guidance on how to think about automation, where you're at as far as uh, what automation means to you. You know, customers are kind of all across the spectrum. You know, maybe one technology silo is more automated than another. So we can kind of help evaluate that on where you're at, um, process management, tooling, um, and, and you know, various use cases that might fit your requirements. From a technology standpoint, one of the main advantages of network virtualization is decoupling of network and security functions from the underlying physical network infrastructure and providing that abstraction uh, into the virtualization layer. So this allows you to better architect and manage your infrastructure, you know, from now and into the future, you know, a lot more flexibility in that regard. And what we can do is provide guidance on architectural best practices, incremental implementations of your infrastructure, periodic rollout of new capabilities. So again, kind of helping on uh, where it fits your use cases and then what the, what the required architecture and design is for that. So myth busters, we have this, we have some of these slides baked in the uh, overall in the presentation. Um, so what are some myth busters, right? Myth one, software defined data center is going to automate me out of a job. So this is a, and not necessarily just a network virtualization, but across the board and other technology silos, that's one of the number one things that we're always hearing. Well, you're gonna automate me out of my, my, out of my job. And that really couldn't be further from the truth. You're not gonna be automated out of your job. You're gonna be focusing on automating repeatable tasks and develop and maintaining policies and blueprints, planning for the future. So you're going to be shifting that, you know, firefighting, so to say, into things that are more strategic. So absolutely not going to be out of, automated out of a job, just refocusing on things that are more pertinent that is driving that speed, agility, flexibility. Myth two, network functions will be absorbed into the virtualization team. It's kind of obvious, especially with things like NSX, there's always a very tight relationship with uh, almost any SDN solution and the virtualization platform, uh, you know, whatever you have on the floor, whatever it may be. Um, but your job is not, certainly not gonna go to the virtualization team, right? So network and security engineers, they're always gonna have to continue performing their existing job functions. Uh, it just might be with a new set of tools, uh, a new set of integrations. So again, certainly not uh, moving that control away. It's all about um, giving and retaining that control. But again, like we talked about cross-functional teams, getting maybe a little bit more familiar with things that you traditionally haven't been more familiar with and how does that apply to uh, help drive agility and speed myth three a virtual overlay is going to make my job more difficult so overlays uh, certainly do not make uh, you know someone's job more difficult uh, just like in server virtualization and what that did for physical servers Network virtualization is doing the same thing 
uh, for the physical networking components. It's, it's making managing and scaling that network, whether it's up, down, or out, uh, sim, you know, more simple and more efficient and more consistent to actually run and maintain. So in the traditional hardware defined data center, siloed approaches, they typically work really well, right? So as the organization matures uh, into more of a private or hybrid cloud, your teams uh, are gonna need to be more blended and they're gonna be almost forced to be more blended. So cross training of each discipline is, is really becomes a necessity uh, from operations folks to engineering to architecture and design, you know, these things are no longer being um, architected and implemented and maintained within your traditional silos, compute, storage, networking, security, uh, virtualization, platform, you know, whatever nomenclature you might, you might use in, in your own organization. But the, uh, you know, let's just start at the top from a design perspective, you know, you're taking, uh, you can no longer just design something that is specific to that silo. You really, it's about taking a look at the big picture, what the impact is on your other customers internally, being your other, uh, your other IT teams, uh, and coming up with the, with the best solution that kind of meets the business requirements as it applies to the entire IT organization. So top three best practices. Um, one, start with a small cross-functional team in your progression toward network virtualization. If you're able to move from a silo, fr away from silo teams to blended teams, try to do that in stages over time. So just like with most things, don't try to boil the ocean. Start small, get familiarity on how that's gonna work, get some success, and then start scaling that out over time. Number two, align with a shared strategy that has well-defined goals, objectives, measures, incentives, et cetera. So your team should have a service-oriented approach and be collectively responsible for the entire service delivery life cycle. So from business requirements to operating, managing, uh, a really high quality uh, production workload that's backed by actual SLAs. So again, this if you could summarize that, it's, it's really all about business requirements and making sure that they're well-defined. Three, it's also wise to evangelize the product across the different lines of business or even the entire organization. So the goal is to build a critical mass of people who support the project and to establish a platform as, you know, the de facto standard of um, the way things are going to, you know, kind of be operated going forward. Uh, so that shared interest, uh, share interesting stories uh, between uh, peers in the business and most importantly, uh, successful IT outcomes of the actual project. So based on real world experience, the most productive teams are tightly woven, highly collaborative, and self-sufficient. These blended teams are proven to work more efficiently. Uh, they have shorter cycle times. They, uh, you know, with condensed and amplified feedback loops. You know, there's a lot of knowledge sharing, continuous learning. And those are the type of, um, you know, high impact uh, teams that are the most successful. So career growth and opportunity. When evangelizing networking and security on your project, explain the potential personal and professional growth. And this is kind of something that's underrated uh, and I think overlooked a lot in IT when we talk about uh, new technology. Uh, so as you virtualize and automate the infrastructure, the networking security staff, they're gonna gain more time to work on new and interesting projects as you're automating and streamlining a lot of this stuff. And it's going to allow them to focus on strategic initiatives that are delivering higher value to the business. 
Okay, so moving into the next, uh, the second area, process and tooling. And in this section, we're gonna explain the impact ne network virtualization has on operational processes. Describe the steps you should take to dissect and understand your existing processes and make recommendations on how to evolve your processes and tools to take advantage of uh, virtualizing your, your network and security operations. So myth busters. Myth number one, virtual networks adds complexity to existing processes. So this is uh, certainly something that we've found to be false. Uh, virtual networks bring agility and simplicity to process. And um, there's gonna be more integration and automation, which is going to streamline the overall operational procedures. And that's almost universally across all of our customers. Myth two, you need separate tools to manage virtual and physical networks, also false. So there are uh, existing management tools that can monitor um, both networks. So both your um, NSX environment, excuse me, <clears throat> or in, and including, um, you know, vSphere virtualization platform. Myth three, network virtualization reduces visibility. Again, false. So the fact that uh, the overlay happens right at the hypervisor, uh, network virtualization provides more context and visibility that uh, we traditionally did not have in the past. Okay, so moving into top three best practices. Uh, number one, don't simply retain all existing processes with NSX, um, network virtualization and security. So doing so will degree the benefits and cost savings you're gonna otherwise achieve. Uh, what you really should do is identify and understand all of your existing network and security processes, understand the impact ne network virtualization has on them. Uh, you know, things like application provisioning, configuration management, uh, change management, capacity management, incident and problem management. You want to understand how these processes work today from end to end and how they can be simplified and streamlined via automation and orchestration. And you'll find that existing processes or steps can be significantly streamlined or even deprecated in a lot of cases. And even, you know, on a lot of the, the a lot of the customers that we work with, um, you know, they are just by nature kind of focused on one area. And when you start kind of piecing together what, what it might take to automate that, it really kind of opens up and everybody kind of really starts understanding what that looks like from, from front to back. And that's when you really start, um, you know, leveraging the, the power of automation to, to drive a ton of value. And after you've taken a thorough inventory, uh, determine your priorities for automating these networks and security processes. For quick wins, focus on addressing areas that are of high value and low effort. You know, don't try to streamline too many processes at one time. Choose one to get started there and then grow that out. And then finally, the hypervisor is ideally and uniquely positioned at the boundary between the physical and virtual worlds. So because the NSX vSwitch sees every packet as it enters and leaves a VM, it provides the highest level of visibility and context. So that's, again, really correlate all those fluid relationships between applications, virtual networks, physical networks, um, and, you know, and beyond. And I always like to tell customers, you know, think of it as you look at your, from a networking perspective, look at your physical switching infrastructure. And if you were to, um, combined your physical switch ports and all of your virtual switch ports, the vast majority of your networking are virtual switch ports. That's, you know, most of your, your, your network ports are, uh, are in that realm. So having something that's closest to that uh, is going to allow you to, is going to allow you to, to scale your, your overall environment beyond, you know, much further beyond where it's at now. 
<clears throat> excuse me. So high impact. NSX really gives you a great reason to assess how you're doing things today and to find a better, more efficient way to move forward. So fixing all the processes uh, that might feel daunting. Um, but again, it's really about taking an incremental approach to automating your processes to avoid paralysis, right? Paralysis by analysis, I always just like to say that. <laughs> Uh, learn and continuously improve. So we talk about continuous delivery, continuous improvement, those types of methodologies. Those are great ways to move forward. And policy-based provisioning of networks and security brings agility and eliminates configuration errors. So again, um, automation and higher visibility are other key benefits of NSX. A rich ecosystem of tools, right? So at the bottom, we have a lot of the native capabilities of NSX, the REST API, syslog, IP fix, port mirroring, trace flow, the central CLI. Uh, and from a VMware perspective, we have a lot of native tools uh, that VMware provides um, to monitor the overall environment. So that entire, that visibility throughout the stack. So vRealize operations, NSX management pack, vRealize log insight, the NSX content pack, and then um, the vRealize network insight, which is an overall uh, networking and in, in flow visualization utility uh, that you can leverage for you know, full visibility between your physical network and your virtual network, including your, the NSX overlay. And uh, you can use it to uh, create security rules, um, monitor application flows. Uh, there's a ton that you can do with Network Insight that a lot of tools out there actually don't provide. And of course, there are also partner tools that integrate with NSX. So Riverbed, NetFlow, Gigamon, NetScout, EMC, all partner tools that natively integrate with NSX, uh, depending on what your use case and your requirements are. Okay, so moving into the last major section here, uh, kind of focusing on architecture. So here are some architecture myth busters. Myth one, tightly integrated system from a single vendor is the best approach. Uh, a tightly integrated system from a single vendor is not always the best. Um, so network virtualization removes the dependencies of the underlying physical infrastructure, but you still need to carefully take a look at what approach works best for your organization. So an integrated system might be the right answer, but it's really all about requirements. So understanding what those requirements are and then aligning that with the with the best solution or set of solutions. Myth number two, network virtualization requires a re-architecture of the physical network. Definitely false. So again, there's no dependencies on the underlying physical infrastructure. And so there's no need to re-architect your physical network. You don't need to, uh, you know, you don't, we talked a little bit about um, leaf spine earlier. You don't need to go through and have a leaf spine physical network architecture to implement NSX. It, that's one of the benefits of it. You can simplify your physical underlay and I'll add all of that, um, you know, all that complexity into a consistent platform that, you know, sits on top of that, your, your actual physical infrastructure. Myth number three, overlay networks are inherently difficult to manage. Uh, really, you know, overlay networks are kind of proven to be uh, a lot more flexible and easier to manage overall. So you get to take advantage of policy driven security and the power of automation to improve the management of your networks. So again, we talked a little bit about changing roles from tr you know, traditional uh, siloed approaches and moving away from, you know, manually configuring VLANs on switch ports now you're defining a policy, you know, one time and every workload that meets that policy 
uh, you know, it's going to, uh, it already knows where it's going to be on the network. It already knows what security policy that's going to be applied and it gets applied automatically. So moving into best practices, um, you know, NSX is not an all or nothing proposition. So um, NSX virtual networks don't require changes to the underlying physical network like we just talked about. And it can transparently coexist with existing application deployments on the physical network. So, you know, from an organizational standpoint, you have the flexibility to virtualize portions of the network by, you know, adding hypervisor nodes to, uh, to the NSX platform or to your virtualization platform. So you don't, again, that's, and that's one of the things that we kind of help customers with a lot of times is defining where to start and allowing them to onboard onto the platform uh, as it makes sense to them. With NSX, the actual physical network architecture uh, is designed simply for connectivity and performance. So again, we kind of just talked about this, but um, the from a physical standpoint, it's all about that abstraction. So maybe not right this you know right this minute when at the time they implement NSX, but maybe a you know further down the road that equipment is depreciated, comes off lease, whatever the case may be. Um, maybe it allows you to uh, recoup some unnecessary costs by simplifying uh, that that physical underlay uh, because it's really just providing connectivity and performance. So that may be as simple as an L2 fabric that you're already using or an L3 fabric based on leaf spine. Um, you can kind of pick and choose, you know, where you want to go. NSX is going to give you the flexibility to do that. And it doesn't impose hard requirements on where L2 boundaries are drawn. So configuration changes to the physical network should be relatively infrequent because um, it's just providing connectivity among the hosts. So high impact, right? So decoupling of network services and topologies from physical hardware has enabled um, layer three leaf spine fabrics to become widespread. So this allows you to establish a common platform with the same logical networking security and management model. And by abstracting the virtual network topology um, as seen by VMs from the physical topology, NSX makes a change uh, in network architecture more feasible. So it, NSX frees the network architects to more easily move to um, leaf spine architecture that uses um, an, an L3 routing design or non-blocking ECMP between top rack switches. It actually enables you to move uh, much more easier, easy to that type of design. And the underlying physical network is free to evolve independently of the virtual network and its architecture is designed around criteria of scalability, throughput, robustness, and a single device or link failure doesn't affect the application connectivity. So again, it, it's really about providing a flexibility to do um, you know, what you need on the physical underlay, but uh, giving you the opportunity to drastically simplify what that actual physical network design is. So putting it all together. So if we put together everything we just talked about, engineers can become more service driven, respond faster to business needs, and overall, you know, allow you to focus on higher value initiatives to the business. So with new and improved processes, uh, you can have better coordination of infrastructure deployments, make more tightly integrated design decisions, and when needed, resolve incidents faster. And you're going to improve the ability to meet uh, SLAs that are defined by the business. So streamlining your service lifecycle and transitioning to a more proactive approach versus a more reactive approach. So some of the things to remember, operations transformation results in big outcomes and rewards. And 
that's something that we see universally. So choose people for the initial team who are change agents, subject matter experts, evangelists, um, any kind of you know respected leader. And find the people who everybody wants to be on their team, right? So people who know how to build interpersonal relationships, open communication paths, identify and minimize points of friction. The, the people that are championing, you know, who in, are encouraging others to make the change to lead by example. So if the team is not you know, co-located, bring them together at the beginning of the project for at least a couple of weeks to kind of help build um, all those relationships. We really, really recommend that you start with a single use case and set of applications. Identify workloads with an attractive risk reward profile to leverage the new capabilities. For your first implementation, choose workloads that are lower risk, but have enough complexity for the purpose of validating NSX in your environment. And the organization's innovators and forward thinkers have an opportunity to contribute to networking and security transformation. And the outcome will be beneficial to those who drive the transformation, just like it was for um, those who championed and built their careers on you know, IP-based networks and more recently, compute virtualization. So in both cases, new breeds of admins were born with new skills and knowledge. And participating in the transformation will help kind of enrich people from a professional standpoint and also increase opportunities uh, and value in the overall, you know, job market. So really to, to kind of summarize it, and I just realized my, my slide wasn't clicking along here. Um, most have done it. It's not complicated and it really requires minimal changes uh, to kind of get started. So what are some next steps, right? Um, NSX documentation is a good place to start. Um, obviously, you can engage us. We're happy to come out. Um, we do technical deep dive workshops. Uh, there are uh, official NSX training certification routes. The VMware Hands-On Labs is an awesome place to get started. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, I, I highly encourage you to check that out. There's a, a ton of different NSX labs out there. Uh, a lot of great use cases that kind of can help, you know, kick the tires and get a feel for what it offers and what it does. And uh, again, a really great place to start. That is, um, for the most part, all we had for today. Um, I kind of like to leave it open for a couple minutes for um, any kind of questions. So I'll hang out for a uh, hang out for a couple of minutes. And once again, if you're going to drop, uh, we really appreciate you joining. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel for our other um, webinar series and uh, subscribe and like.